Before we dive into our story, let's take a moment. You're listening to Woo English, where we help you learn English through captivating stories. Our tales are told with clear and simple sentences, perfect for enhancing your understanding and love for the English language. If you find our stories helpful, please show us some support. Press the like button to reward our efforts. It encourages us to bring you more content like this. And we'd love to hear from you in the comments. Share your thoughts, insights, or just say hello. Your engagement truly means the world to us. Now, let's get lost in today's story. Chapter 1 Introduction to an Era Once upon a time, the world was caught in a great conflict known as the Second World War. This war, unlike any before, stretched across continents, involving many countries and affecting countless lives. It was a time of great sadness, but also of hope for a future where peace would reign once more. In the early 1940s, the war had been raging for several years. Europe was engulfed in battles, and the Pacific Ocean became a vast arena for conflict. Nations chose sides, forming alliances either with the Axis powers, led by Germany, Italy and Japan, or with the Allies, led by Britain, the Soviet Union, the United States and China. Families across the globe listened closely to their radios, hoping for news of peace, while soldiers fought bravely on land and sea. Among the nations deeply involved was the United States of America, which had joined the Allies after being attacked at a place called Pearl Harbor by the Japanese forces. This event marked a turning point, drawing the country fully into the global conflict. As the war continued, scientists in various countries raced to unlock new technologies, believing that innovation could bring an end to the fighting. One such project in the United States, known as the Manhattan Project, aimed to develop a weapon unlike any other, a nuclear bomb. The leaders and scientists involved in this project hoped that such a powerful weapon could convince the enemy to surrender thus sparing countless lives and bringing the war to a swift conclusion. Meanwhile, daily life in the countries at war was profoundly affected. Families grew vegetable gardens and saved metal and rubber for the war effort. Children collected scraps of paper and fabric, and women took jobs in factories, producing goods needed for the battlefields. Everyone hoped their efforts would help bring their loved ones home sooner. Despite the hardships, communities found ways to support each other. People shared what little they had, comforting those who had received bad news from the front lines. In these difficult times, the spirit of unity was strong and the desire for peace grew with each passing day. As the Allies made significant advances in Europe, attention turned to the Pacific, where fighting with Japan continued. The leaders of the Allied nations faced a difficult decision. They could continue the fight, which would likely result in many more casualties on both sides, or they could use the new atomic bomb, a decision that weighed heavily on their hearts. In the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, life went on as much as it could amidst the war. Children played in the streets, unaware of the discussions taking place far away that would change their lives forever. Families cherished the moments they spent together, hopeful that the war's end was in sight. The world stood at a crossroads, with the future uncertain. People everywhere longed for peace and dreamed of a time when the sounds of war would be replaced by laughter and joy. Little did they know, the events that were about to unfold in Hiroshima and Nagasaki would leave a lasting mark on history, serving as a somber reminder of the war's devastation 
and the importance of working towards a peaceful world. As we embark on this story, let us remember the resilience of the human spirit and the power of hope. For even in the darkest times, there is light to be found, guiding us towards a future where peace is not just a dream, but a reality. Chapter 2 A Day Like Any Other On the morning of August 6, 1945, the city of Hiroshima woke up to a day that seemed like any other. The soon rose, casting a gentle glow over the peaceful streets, rivers, and the beautiful historic castles that told tales of a time long gone. In the heart of this bustling city lived the Yamada family, who, like their neighbors, started their day with the hope that peace was on the horizon. Mr. Yamada, a kind-hearted man with a gentle smile, worked at a local factory, contributing to the war effort as many others did. Mrs. Yamada, known for her warm hospitality, busied herself with preparing breakfast, her hands moving gracefully as she flipped pancakes, a rare treat for her two children, Hina and Yuji. Hina, a spirited ten-year-old with dreams as big as the sky, was always curious, asking countless questions about the world beyond Hiroshima. Yuji, her younger brother, was quieter, finding joy in the little things, like the way the morning light danced on the river's surface. As the family gathered around the small dining table, sharing stories and laughter, the air outside was filled with the sounds of daily life. Neighbors greeted each other, children's laughter echoed through the streets, and shopkeepers prepared for another day of business. The beauty of Hiroshima was undeniable. Its streets, lined with trees, offered shade and comfort to those who walked by. The city's parks were green and vibrant, providing a peaceful escape for families and friends. The Otter River, flowing through the city, was a source of life and joy, with children playing along its banks and boats gliding gently across the water. Despite the ongoing war, the people of Hiroshima found ways to embrace life's simple pleasures. They cherished the moments spent with family and friends, holding on to hope for a future filled with peace. On this seemingly ordinary day, the Yamada family, like many others, went about their routines. Mr. Yamada left for work with a smile, promising to return home early. Hina and Yuji helped their mother with chores, eagerly anticipating an afternoon visit to their favorite park. As the morning progressed, the streets of Hiroshima buzzed with activity. Markets filled with shoppers, children made their way to school, and the scent of freshly baked goods filled the air. It was a testament to the resilience of the city's inhabitants, who, despite the uncertainties of war, continued to live with hope and courage. But this day was different. Unknown to the people of Hiroshima, their city had been chosen as the target for the first atomic bomb. As they went about their day, a plane flew high above, carrying a weapon that would change the world forever. At 8.15 a.m., a bright flash lit up the sky, followed by a deafening boom. In an instant, the vibrant city of Hiroshima was enveloped in darkness. Buildings crumbled, fires ignited, and the serene morning turned into chaos. The Yamada family, like so many others, found themselves in the midst of unimaginable destruction. But amid the despair, their love for each other remained unbroken. They held on to hope, determined to find a way back to each other and to rebuild their lives. This day, which began like any other, became a pivotal moment in history, a reminder of the fragility of life and the devastating consequences of war. Yet it also highlighted the strength of the human spirit, the capacity for love and resilience in the face of adversity. 
As we reflect on the story of the Yamada family and the city of Hiroshima, we are reminded of the importance of cherishing each day, of living with hope, and of working together for a future where peace is not just a possibility, but a reality. Chapter 3 The Enola Gay Far from the peaceful morning in Hiroshima, on the other side of the world, a group of men faced a mission that would forever change history. These men were the crew of the Enola Gay, a B-29 bomber aircraft. Named after the mother of its pilot, Colonel Paul Tibbets, the Enola Gay was not just any plane. It was the carrier of the first atomic bomb to be used in war. The morning of August 6, 1945, started early for the crew. Each man knew the significance of their task, carrying a weight heavier than the bomb itself. They were part of something much bigger, something that could potentially end years of conflict but at a great cost. Colonel Paul Tibbets, the pilot, was a man of experience and resolve. He understood the mission's importance and what it meant for the war and the world. Despite the gravity of their task, he remained focused, guiding his crew with confidence. Beside him was Robert Lewis, the co-pilot who felt a mix of honor and apprehension about their mission. He had joined the army to serve his country, but the reality of dropping such a powerful bomb weighed heavily on his heart. Navigator Theodore Van Kirk, known as Dutch, tried to concentrate on the technical aspects of the flight, charting their course with precision. Yet the human side of the mission was never far from his mind, creating a silent turmoil within him. Tom Ferraby, the bombardier, was responsible for releasing the bomb at the precise moment. His role was crucial, and he felt the pressure of his responsibility. Despite his calm exterior, he questioned the aftermath of their actions. Each member of the crew dealt with the mission in his own way. Some tried to focus on the technicalities, treating it as another task to be completed. Others couldn't help but think about the people in Hiroshima, about the lives that would be changed forever by their actions. As the Enola Gay took off from Tinian Island, the world below seemed peaceful from the air. The sky was clear, and the sun had just begun to rise, casting a golden glow over the Pacific Ocean. It was hard to imagine that they were about to participate in one of the most significant and devastating events in history. The flight to Hiroshima was long and tense. Inside the Enola Gay, the crew moved with purpose, checking and rechecking their instruments, ensuring everything was in order for the mission. Conversations were minimal, each man lost in his thoughts, contemplating the magnitude of what was about to happen. Colonel Tibbets, sensing the heavy atmosphere, spoke to his crew, reminding them of the importance of their mission. He spoke of the lives lost in the war, of the families waiting for their loved ones to return home. This mission, he said, could bring an end to all the suffering. His words were meant to comfort, but the uncertainty remained. As they approached Hiroshima, the reality of their mission became even more palpable. The city was just waking up, unaware of the imminent danger. From above, it looked peaceful, a stark contrast to the destruction they were about to unleash. The moment came, and Tom Ferraby released the bomb. The Enola Gay turned sharply to escape the blast radius. Silence fell among the crew as they waited for the explosion. A silence so profound it felt like the whole world was holding its breath. Then, the bomb detonated, creating a blinding flash of light, followed by a massive cloud rising into the ski. The crew of the Enola Gay witnessed the explosion from their aircraft, a sight they would never forget. Mixed feelings of relief, 
horror and sadness filled the plain. They had completed their mission, but at what cost? The flight back to Tinian Island was somber. Each man processed what they had done in his own way, knowing that their lives and the lives of those in Hiroshima would never be the same. They had played a part in ending the war, but the memories of that day would stay with them forever. Upon landing, the crew was greeted as heroes, but the celebrations felt hollow. The world had entered a new era, one in which the power to destroy entire cities was a reality. The men of the Enola Gay had carried out their orders, but they also carried the burden of knowing the impact of their actions. As we reflect on the story of the Enola Gay and its crew, we are reminded of the complexities of war and the heavy responsibilities shouldered by those who serve. Their mission was a turning point in history, a moment that showed the devastating power of human innovation and the importance of striving for peace in a world capable of so much destruction. Chapter 4 6th August, 1945, Hiroshima The morning of August 6, 1945, in Hiroshima, began like any other day. The sun shone brightly, casting a warm glow over the city. People went about their daily routines, unaware that this day would be recorded in history books forever. At 8.15 a.m., the city was suddenly engulfed in a blinding flash of light brighter than a thousand suns. For a moment, time seemed to stand still. Then, an enormous boom shattered the silence, followed by a powerful force that swept across Hiroshima. In the heart of the city, buildings that had stood for years crumbled to the ground. Windows shattered, sending glass flying through the air. Trees were uprooted, and the beautiful parks that families had enjoyed just the day before were now scenes of devastation. The people of Hiroshima were thrown into confusion. Many who had been indoors found themselves trapped under the rubble of their homes and workplaces. Those outside were knocked off their feet, disoriented by the blast. The familiar streets were suddenly unrecognizable, covered in dust and debris. Amidst the chaos, the people of Hiroshima showed remarkable resilience. Neighbors helped each other out of destroyed buildings calling out for friends and family members. Parents clutched their children tightly, trying to shield them from the sight of their city in ruins. The immediate aftermath was a blur of motion and emotion. Fear and shock were etched on the faces of survivors as they tried to comprehend what had happened. Many were injured, suffering from burns and cuts, yet the urgency to find loved ones pushed them to keep moving. In the midst of the devastation, acts of kindness shone brightly. Strangers helped each other navigate through the debris-strewn streets. People shared water and food, despite not knowing when they would have more. In a time of unimaginable tragedy, the human spirit's capacity for compassion and resilience was evident. The Yamada family, introduced in the previous chapter, found themselves separated by the chaos. Mr. Yamada, who had been at work, desperately searched for his way back home, calling out for his wife and children. Mrs. Yamada, who had been preparing to take Hina and Yuji to the park, found shelter under a sturdy table, holding her children close as the world around them shook. After what felt like an eternity, the dust began to settle, and the extent of the destruction became apparent. Hiroshima, once a vibrant city, was now a landscape of ruin. Yet, amid the despair, there were glimmers of hope. Survivors, amidst their own losses, reached out to help those around them, showing a strength and solidarity that transcended the tragedy. The Yamada family, like so many others, faced the daunting task of finding each other in a city
that no longer looked the same. Their journey through the ruined streets was fraught with obstacles, but the thought of reuniting kept them moving forward. As night fell on Hiroshima, the city was a stark contrast to the morning. Where there had once been the hustle and bustle of daily life, there was now silence, broken only by the occasional cries for help or the sound of rescue teams at work. In the days that followed, the world would come to learn of the bombing of Hiroshima and its devastating impact. But for those who lived through it, August 6, 1945, was not just a date in history. It was the day their lives changed forever. This chapter seeks to convey the immediate impact of the atomic bombing on Hiroshima and its people, focusing on the confusion and struggle to understand what had happened. Through the story of the Yamada family and the experiences of other survivors, we see the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable adversity. Chapter 5 The Aftermath the morning after the bombing of Hiroshima was met with silence. Where there once was a vibrant city full of life, now lay a landscape of ruins. Yet amidst the devastation, the spirit of the people of Hiroshima began to shine through the darkness. As dawn broke, survivors emerged from their shelters, determined to find their families and help their neighbors. The air was filled with a sense of urgency, but also with hope. Hope that loved ones would be found, and that the city could one day be rebuilt. Mr. Yamada, despite his injuries, moved through the streets with a single purpose, to find his wife and children. He passed by groups of survivors, all searching for their families, and witnessed acts of kindness that filled him with hope. People shared their water, offered their support to those who were injured, and helped clear paths through the debris. Mrs. Yamada and her children, Hina and Yuji, had spent the night in what remained of their home, praying for the safety of Mr. Yamada. As they stepped out into the daylight, they were met with scenes of destruction, but also with the comforting presence of their neighbors, who had become like a second family. The rescue efforts in Hiroshima were a testament to the resilience of its people. With limited resources and no outside help, survivors banded together to search for those trapped under the rubble. They formed human chains passing debris from hand to hand to free those who were trapped. Amidst the chaos, there were countless stories of bravery and compassion. A young girl, no older than Hina, was seen leading a group of younger children to safety, her voice steady as she sang a song to keep their spirits up. A man, his own wounds bandaged, went from one site to another, offering his medical knowledge to treat the injured. The challenges faced by the survivors were immense. With much of the city destroyed, finding food and clean water became a daily struggle. Yet, in the face of these hardships, the people of Hiroshima showed remarkable ingenuity. Gardens were planted amidst the ruins, and wells were dug to access clean water. As the days passed, the outside world began to take notice. Aid started to arrive, bringing much-needed supplies and medical assistance. The survivors welcomed this help with gratitude, but it was their initial efforts their refusal to give up in those first few days that laid the foundation for Hiroshima's recovery. The story of Hiroshima in the aftermath of the bombing is not just a tale of destruction and loss. It is a story of human courage, of a community coming together to support one another in their darkest hour. It is a reminder of the power of compassion and the strength of the human spirit. The Yamada family was eventually reunited, their joy a beacon of hope in a time of despair. Their journey was just one of many, 
each survivor's story a testament to the resilience of the people of Hiroshima. As Hiroshima began to rebuild, the survivors faced their challenges with determination. They knew that the road to recovery would be long and difficult, but they also knew that they were not alone. They had each other, and together they would rebuild their city, not just as it was, but as a symbol of peace and resilience. The aftermath of the bombing of Hiroshima is a powerful reminder of the impact of war, but also of the capacity for recovery and renewal. The survivors' efforts to rebuild their lives and their city serve as an enduring testament to the strength of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Chapter 6 A Second Warning After the bombing of Hiroshima, the world stood still, waiting and watching. News of the event spread far and wide, reaching the ears of people in every corner of the globe. There was a mixture of shock, fear, and a desperate hope that this devastating event would bring an end to the war. Yet, amidst the calls for peace, a difficult conversation was taking place among world leaders. In a room filled with maps and heavy silence, leaders and military officials debated the next course of action. The bombing of Hiroshima had shown the world the terrifying power of the atomic bomb, but Japan had not yet surrendered. Some argued that a second demonstration of this power was necessary to end the war quickly and save more lives in the long run. Others feared the consequences of another bombing, the loss of innocent lives, and the ethical implications of using such a weapon again. As the debate continued, far away from these discussions of war and strategy, the city of Nagasaki went about its daily life, unaware of the storm that was about to descend upon it. Nagasaki, like Hiroshima, was a city full of history, culture, and beauty. Its people were civilians, living their lives amidst the backdrop of a world at war, hoping for peace. In Nagasaki, families woke up to another day. Children played in the streets, and workers headed to their jobs, all under the watchful gaze of the same sun that had risen over Hiroshima just days before. The city, known for its picturesque landscapes and vibrant community, was a tapestry of human lives, each thread intertwined with the others in the fabric of daily existence. Back in the world of global politics and military strategy, the decision was made. Despite the reservations of some, it was decided that a second bombing was necessary to compel Japan to surrender. The target was Nagasaki, a city chosen not for its military significance, but as a stark warning of the power the Allies held. The news of this decision did not reach the people of Nagasaki in time. There was no warning, no chance to evacuate, no preparation for what was to come. The decision, made in secrecy, left no room for the voices of those who would be most affected. As the day approached, the people of Nagasaki continued their lives, unaware that their city had been marked on a map, chosen by leaders far away. The gap between the world of global decisions and the daily lives of ordinary people had never felt so vast. In Nagasaki, an artist painted landscapes of the city, capturing its beauty for future generations. A teacher prepared lessons for her students, hoping to instill in them a love for learning that would carry them through whatever the future held. A young boy played with his dog, laughing as they ran through the streets. A moment of joy in a world filled with too much sadness. These were the lives that hung in the balance as the decision to bomb Nagasaki was carried out. They were not soldiers on the battlefield, but civilians caught in the crossfire of decisions made in the name of ending a war. The chapter of Nagasaki's bombing is a somber reminder of the cost of war, 
not just in military terms, but in the lives of people who had no say in the matters that led to their city's destruction. It underscores the importance of seeking peace and the responsibility of leaders to consider the impact of their decisions on the lives of innocent people. Chapter 7 9th August 1945, Nagasaki On the morning of August 9th, 1945, Nagasaki awoke to a day that promised nothing out of the ordinary. The city, nestled among rolling hills and scenic harbours, buzzed with the energy of daily life. Little did its residents know. Their lives were about to change forever. Among the city's inhabitants were the Sato family. Kenji, a local baker, his wife, Miho, a schoolteacher, and their daughter Yumi, a bright-eyed girl of seven, who found joy in everything around her. Their morning began as usual, with Kenji heading to the bakery before dawn to prepare the day's bread, while Miho and Yumi enjoyed a quiet breakfast, chatting about their plans for the day. As Kenji kneaded dough in the quiet of his bakery, he looked forward to the evening when he would share a meal with his family, perhaps take a walk by the harbour and watch the boats come in. Miho, preparing for her day at school, thought about her students, hoping to inspire them with new lessons and dreams of a peaceful future. Yumi, ever curious and full of life, eagerly anticipated another day of learning and play with her friends. But at 11.02 a.m., the ordinary day turned into a nightmare. A single plane flew over Nagasaki, unnoticed by many as they went about their day. Then, without warning, an atomic bomb exploded above the city, unleashing a force of destruction never before seen. In an instant, the vibrant city of Nagasaki was transformed. Buildings that had stood for generations were flattened. The streets, once filled with the sounds of daily life, were now scenes of unimaginable devastation. The blue sky turned dark, and a silence fell over the city, a haunting absence of life where there had once been so much. Kenji, at his bakery near the bomb's hypocenter, had no time to understand what was happening. The force of the explosion swept through the city, leaving destruction in its wake. Miho, at her school, shielded her students as best she could, her heart racing with fear for Yumi and Kenji. Yumi, playing in the schoolyard, was knocked off her feet, confusion and fear clouding her young mind. The aftermath of the bombing was a test of the human spirit. Survivors, wounded and bewildered, wandered through the ruins of their city, searching for loved ones, offering help to those they could. Amidst the chaos, the Sato family, like so many others, faced the daunting task of finding each other in a city they could no longer recognize. Miho, with a group of her students, made their way through the streets, calling out for Yumi and Kenji. Yumi, helped by a kind stranger, looked for her mother's familiar face among the crowds of confused and frightened people. Kenji, injured but alive, clung to the hope that his family had survived. In the days that followed, Nagasaki came together in a collective effort to rescue, recover, and rebuild. The people of the city showed remarkable resilience, caring for the wounded, mourning the lost, and finding strength in their shared suffering. The Sato family was eventually reunited. Their joy at finding each other alive was a beacon of hope in a time of despair. Their story, like that of so many others, is a testament to the strength of love and family in the face of tragedy. The bombing of Nagasaki, following so closely after Hiroshima, marked a turning point in history. It brought the world face to face with the destructive power of nuclear weapons and underscored the urgent need for peace and reconciliation. 
As the survivors of Nagasaki rebuilt their lives, they carried with them the memory of that day, a reminder of the cost of war and the value of peace. Their resilience, courage and compassion in the aftermath of the bombing are a legacy that continues to inspire. Chapter 8 Surviving the Unimaginable In the days and weeks following the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the survivors faced challenges that seemed insurmountable. Yet, amidst the tragedy and devastation, stories of resilience and hope emerged, painting a picture of the indomitable human spirit. In Hiroshima, the Yamada family, once separated by the Chaos, found strength in their reunion. Despite their losses, they were grateful to be together. Their home was gone, replaced by rubble, but their family remained, a beacon of hope in the darkest of times. Together, they joined the community in the effort to rebuild, not just their city, but their lives. Similarly, in Nagasaki, the Sato family's reunion brought light to their lives amidst the darkness. Their bakery, a symbol of their livelihood, lay in ruins, but Kenji's hands, once used to knead dough, now worked alongside neighbors to clear debris and offer aid to those in need. Miho, with her unwavering spirit, organized classes for children amidst the ruins, believing in the power of education to heal and inspire hope for the future. And young Yumi, her innocence a stark contrast to the destruction around her, found ways to bring smiles to those who had forgotten how to laugh. Survivors from both cities, each with their own story of loss and survival, came together in the aftermath. Community centers, makeshift from the remnants of destroyed buildings, became hubs of activity. Here people shared what little food and water they had, tended to the injured, and provided comfort to those grieving. Doctors and nurses, many of whom were survivors themselves, worked tirelessly to care for the injured. With limited medical supplies, they relied on their ingenuity and determination to treat burns, injuries, and the unseen wounds of trauma. Their dedication savored countless lives and offered a glimmer of hope in the midst of despair. Volunteers from neighboring towns and villages untouched by the bombings came to Hiroshima and Nagasaki to offer their support. They brought food, clothing, and a willingness to help in any way they could. Their acts of kindness bridged the divide between strangers, creating bonds of solidarity that would endure long after the cities were rebuilt. Amidst the tragedy, the people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki demonstrated remarkable resilience. They found ways to mourn their losses while celebrating the preciousness of life. Vigils and memorials were held not just to remember those who had been lost, but to affirm the survivors' commitment to peace and to ensure that the world would never forget the cost of war. Children, the most vulnerable yet resilient of all, adapted to their new realities with courage. They played among the ruins, their laughter a testament to the enduring hope that life would go on, that peace would one day be restored. Their innocence and joy reminded everyone that, even in the darkest times, there is light to be found. As the years passed, Hiroshima and Nagasaki began to heal. The physical scars of the bombings slowly faded as buildings were rebuilt and streets were restored. Yet, the memories of those days remained, etched in the hearts and minds of the survivors. Their stories of survival and resilience became a legacy, passed down through generations. They spoke of the horrors of war, but also of the strength found in unity, the importance of compassion, and the unyielding hope for a better future. 
the survivors' efforts to rebuild their cities and their lives are a powerful reminder of the capacity for renewal in the face of unimaginable adversity. They showed the world that, even from the depths of despair, it is possible to rise, to rebuild, and to find hope once more. Chapter 9. The World Reacts In the days following the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the world stood at a crossroads. News of the devastation traveled fast, reaching distant corners of the globe and stirring a mix of emotions. Shock, horror, relief, and deep reflection. The immediate impact of the bombings led to Japan's surrender marking the end of World War II. However, the long-term consequences would unfold over the years, shaping the course of international relations and sparking a movement towards nuclear disarmament. As people around the world learned of the events in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, governments and leaders were forced to confront the reality of nuclear warfare. The bombings had not only ended a war, but also opened a Pandora's box of ethical and moral questions. The sheer scale of destruction and loss of life prompted a global dialogue about the use of nuclear weapons and the need for strict controls to prevent future tragedies. In the aftermath, the United Nations, an international organization formed to promote peace and cooperation among countries, took center stage. Discussions about nuclear weapons became a priority, with many nations advocating for disarmament and non-proliferation agreements. These talks were not easy. They were filled with tension and disagreements, reflecting the complex nature of international politics and the fear of giving up such powerful weapons. <laughs> Amidst the political debates, a grassroots movement for nuclear disarmament began to take shape. Survivors of the bombings, known as Hibakusha, became powerful voices for peace, sharing their stories with the world. Their first-hand accounts of the horrors they had experienced were a sobering reminder of the human cost of nuclear warfare. They traveled across countries, speaking at schools, universities, and public forums, calling for an end to nuclear weapons. Their message resonated with people from all walks of life, leading to the formation of various peace organizations and campaigns. Marches, rallies, and protests were organized in cities around the world, uniting people in their desire for a peaceful future. The symbol of the peace movement, a circle with three lines representing a nuclear disarmament symbol, became recognized worldwide as a call to action. One of the key outcomes of the international response was the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, NPT an agreement aimed at preventing the spread of nuclear weapons and promoting peaceful uses of nuclear energy. While not all countries initially signed the treaty, it marked a significant step towards global disarmament efforts. The bombings also prompted a re-evaluation of military strategies and the ethical considerations of warfare. Countries recognized the need for laws and guidelines that would protect civilians in times of conflict, leading to discussions about the rules of war and the importance of humanitarian considerations. The reaction to Hiroshima and Nagasaki's bombings had far-reaching implications, influencing not just military and political policies, but also the global consciousness. The events sparked a debate about humanity's future the role of science and technology in society, and the moral responsibility of nations to safeguard the planet. As we reflect on the international response to the atomic bombings, it's clear that the legacy of Hiroshima and Nagasaki extends beyond their immediate impact. They became catalysts for change, inspiring movements for peace and disarmament that continue to this day. 
Chapter 10 Rebuilding Lives In the years following the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the survivors faced the monumental task of rebuilding their lives from the ashes of devastation. The immediate aftermath of the bombings had brought unimaginable loss and suffering, but the long-term effects would continue to challenge the survivors and their families for generations. The health effects of the bombings were profound and far-reaching. Many survivors, known as Hibakusha, suffered from injuries and illnesses caused by the radiation. These conditions required medical treatment that was often difficult to access in the years following the war. The survivors bore not just the physical scars, but the emotional and psychological ones as well. They had to cope with the trauma of what they had experienced the loss of loved ones, and the stigma associated with being a hibakusha. Despite these challenges, the people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki showed remarkable resilience. The process of rebuilding the cities began slowly, with survivors taking the lead. They cleared rubble, constructed temporary shelters, and worked tirelessly to restore essential services. Community spirit and cooperation were vital during this time, as resources were scarce and the task ahead seemed insurmountable. The reconstruction of Hiroshima and Nagasaki was not just about rebuilding buildings and infrastructure. It was about restoring the fabric of the community and healing the wounds of the past. Schools reopened, businesses were established, and parks and memorials were created to honor those who had been lost. The cities were reborn from the ruins, symbolizing hope and the possibility of renewal. The survivors also played a crucial role in educating future generations about the bombings and their aftermath. They shared their stories, not for the sake of reliving their trauma, but to promote peace and ensure that the world would never forget the consequences of nuclear warfare. Museums and peace parks in Hiroshima and Nagasaki became centers for peace education, attracting visitors from around the world. One of the most significant challenges for the survivors and their families was overcoming the stigma associated with being a hibakusha. In the years following the bombings, some survivors faced discrimination in employment, marriage, and other areas of social life. This discrimination was rooted in fear and misunderstanding about the effects of radiation exposure. Overcoming this stigma required education and advocacy, and the Hibakusha were at the forefront of these efforts, fighting for recognition and support. The government of Japan and international organizations eventually established programs to provide support to the survivors, including medical care, financial assistance, and acknowledgement of their suffering. These programs were an important step toward addressing the long-term effects of the bombings. But for many Hibakusha, the journey toward healing and justice continues. The rebuilding of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the lives of their survivors is a testament to the strength of the human spirit. From the devastation of the atomic bombings, the cities emerged as symbols of peace and resilience. The Hibakusha, with their stories of survival and their dedication to peace, remind us of the power of hope and the importance of working together for a better future. Chapter 10 Remembering the Victims In the years following the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the survivors, known as Hibakusha, and the families of those lost, found various ways to honor and remember their loved ones. Amidst the rebuilding of their lives and cities, creating memorials and holding ceremonies became vital practices to keep the memory of the victims alive and to promote a message of peace. In Hiroshima, the Peace Memorial Park stands as a poignant reminder of the tragic day. At its heart is the Genbaku Dome, 
the only structure left standing near the bomb's hippo center. Now preserved as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the dome serves as a powerful symbol of resilience. Visitors from around the world walk its grounds in silence, reflecting on the cost of war and the preciousness of peace. Every year on August 6th, the people of Hiroshima gather for the peace memorial ceremony. The city observes a moment of silence at 8.15 a.m., the exact time the bomb exploded. Paper lanterns are floated down the Motoyasu River, each one carrying a prayer for peace and a promise. To never forget the lives lost. The sight of lanterns gliding on the water as dusk falls is both beautiful and heart-rending, a tribute to those who perished, and a beacon of hope for the future. In Nagasaki, the Peace Park and the Atomic Bomb Museum tell the story of the bombing and its aftermath. The park is home to the Peace Statue, a towering figure with one hand pointing to the threat of nuclear weapons and the other extended in peace. Here, too, an annual ceremony on August 9th brings the community together to remember and to heal. Bells toll and thousands of paper cranes, a symbol of peace and healing, are offered in memory of the victims. Survivors and families have their personal rituals of remembrance as well. Many visit these memorials throughout the year, bringing flowers, incense, and prayers. They share stories of those they lost, not just as a recounting of tragedy, but as a celebration of lives lived. In homes, photographs of loved ones are displayed with honor, and family members tell tales of their courage, their dreams, and their love ensuring that their memory lives on in the hearts of new generations. Children learn about the bombings through stories from their families, school visits to the memorials, and participation in peace education programs. By understanding the past, they carry forward the legacy of the Hibakusha and the message that peace is something to be cherished and protected. The memorials in Hiroshima and Nagasaki are not just about looking back. They are beacons for the future. They stand as a reminder of the horrors of nuclear war and a call to action for the elimination of nuclear weapons. The Hibakusha have become ambassadors of peace, sharing their experiences with the world and advocating for a future where no one else must suffer as they did. Through these acts of remembrance and the preservation of memory, the victims of the atomic bombings are honored not just as symbols of a tragic past, but as messengers of hope. Their stories, preserved in the heart of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, continue to inspire those who believe in a world where peace is possible. Chapter 11 Remembering the Victims in the wake of the atomic bombings in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the cities rose from the ashes, not just to rebuild structures and streets, but also to ensure the memories of the victims and the lessons of those days were never forgotten. Across both cities, memorials and ceremonies became integral parts of the landscape, each telling a story of loss, resilience, and a plea for peace. In Hiroshima, the Peace Memorial Park serves as a sanctuary of remembrance and reflection. At its heart lies the Genbaku Dome, a haunting reminder of the bomb's devastation, preserved in its ruined state. Surrounding it, monuments and memorials spread across the park, each dedicated to the different groups of victims. The Children's Peace Monument, inspired by the story of Sadako Sasaki and her thousand paper cranes, symbolizes the innocent lives lost and the dreams unfulfilled because of the bombing. Each year, on August 6th, 
the city of Hiroshima pauses to honor those who were lost. The peace memorial ceremony is a moment of collective mourning and remembrance. A moment of silence engulfs the city at 8.15 a.m., marking the exact time of the bombing. It's a silence that speaks volumes, filled with the weight of memories and the hope for a future free from such sorrow. The ceremony includes the release of lanterns into the Ota River, a light for every soul that was extinguished, guiding them in peace. Nagasaki, too, has its spaces of remembrance. The Peace Park stands as a testament to the city's commitment to peace and reconciliation. Central to the park is the Peace Statue, a figure that symbolizes the dual realities of the threat of nuclear war and the enduring hope for peace. The Nagasaki Atomic Bomb Museum offers a place for learning and reflection, detailing the day of the bombing and its aftermath, ensuring that the stories of survivors and the lessons learned are passed on. On August 9th, Nagasaki's Peace Memorial Ceremony mirrors the reflective, somber tone of Hiroshima's with prayers, music, and a moment of silence. Here, too, the community comes together, bound by shared loss and a collective determination to advocate for a world without nuclear weapons. Beyond these public commemorations, personal acts of remembrance occur daily. Survivors and family members visit these memorials to offer prayers, flowers, and sometimes folded paper cranes, a symbol of healing and hope. For many, these rituals are a way to connect with lost loved ones, to share moments of joy and sorrow, and to pass on stories of endurance and strength to younger generations. Families keep the memories of their lost loved ones alive in their homes. Photographs, personal belongings, and stories become sacred treasures, a bridge to the past. These stories, often shared around the dinner table or during family gatherings, become lessons of resilience, courage, and the preciousness of peace. Education plays a crucial role in remembrance. Schools in Hiroshima and Nagasaki incorporate peace education into their curriculum ensuring that children understand the history of their cities, the consequences of nuclear war, and the importance of peace. Visits to the memorials and museums are an essential part of this education, providing a tangible connection to the past. The memorials and ceremonies in Hiroshima and Nagasaki are not just about looking back, they're about looking forward. They stand as reminders of the devastating consequences of nuclear war, urging current and future generations to pursue peace and disarmament. The stories of those who were lost and those who survived continue to inspire people around the world to work towards a future where such tragedies are never repeated. Chapter 12 Lessons Learned the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki are chapters in history that brought unimaginable sorrow and destruction. Yet, from these dark moments, powerful lessons have emerged, guiding humanity towards a future where peace and understanding prevail. The Value of Peace The first and most profound lesson is the value of peace. The survivors, with their stories of loss and resilience, have become ambassadors for peace. They remind us that peace is not merely the absence of war, but a precious state that must be nurtured and protected. Their experiences teach us that conflicts should be resolved, not through violence, but through dialogue, understanding, and cooperation. The Moral Implications of Nuclear Warfare the bombings highlighted the devastating moral implications of nuclear warfare. They showed the world that nuclear weapons possess the terrifying ability to annihilate entire cities, erase history, and cause suffering for generations. The moral question arises, should humanity possess weapons capable of such destruction? 
the consensus among survivors and peace advocates is a resounding no. The moral imperative to prevent such tragedies from occurring again has fueled global movements for nuclear disarmament, pushing for treaties and agreements that aim to reduce and eventually eliminate these weapons. The importance of remembering history. Remembering the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki teaches us the importance of history. By keeping the memory of these events alive, we honor those who were lost and those who survived. History serves as a mirror reflecting the consequences of our actions and the paths that led to them. It is a reminder that the choices we make today shape the world for generations to come. To forget history is to risk repeating it. Educating for a better future Education plays a crucial role in passing on the lessons of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. By incorporating these stories into curricula around the world, we can educate future generations about the horrors of nuclear warfare, the importance of peace, and the value of human life. Education fosters empathy and understanding, essential components for building a peaceful world. The power of unity and hope. Finally, the stories of Hiroshima and Nagasaki teach us about the power of unity and hope. In the aftermath of the bombings, communities came together to rebuild their lives and cities. This unity in the face of adversity reminds us that together we possess the strength to overcome even the greatest challenges. Hope, too, is a powerful force. It drives us to imagine a better world, to work towards it, and to believe in the possibility of change. Chapter 13. The Power of Storytelling In the aftermath of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the world was left with a legacy of stories. These stories, filled with pain, loss, resilience, and hope, have found their way into art, literature, and popular culture, becoming powerful tools for healing, education, and promoting peace. Art as a Reflection of the Soul Artists from Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and around the world have used their talents to capture the essence of the bombings and their aftermath. Paintings and sculptures depict the raw emotions of the survivors, the physical devastation of the cities, and the deep desire for peace. These works of art serve as visual narratives, compelling viewers to reflect on the impact of nuclear warfare and the preciousness of peace. Exhibitions in museums and galleries offer spaces where people can connect with these stories, fostering empathy and understanding across cultures. Literature, a window to the heart. Writers, too, have been inspired by the stories of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Novels, poems and memoirs penned by survivors and subsequent generations explore the human side of the tragedy. They delve into the lives of those who lived through the bombings, offering insights into their struggles, fears, and hopes. This literature serves as a bridge, connecting readers to the experiences of those who witnessed the unimaginable. It teaches the value of life and the importance of peace, urging readers to consider the consequences of war. Popular Culture – Stories for All The stories of Hiroshima and Nagasaki have also permeated popular culture, reaching wide audiences through films, music, and theatre. Movies and documentaries present the historical facts, combined with the emotional depth of personal stories, making the lessons of the bombings accessible to people of all ages and backgrounds. Music, with its universal language, conveys the emotions of the bombings and the longing for peace, touching the hearts of listeners around the world. Theatre productions, reenacting the events and aftermath, invite audiences to witness the human dimensions of history, creating a shared space for reflection and dialogue. 
The Role of Storytelling in Healing Storytelling has played a crucial role in the healing process for survivors and their families. Sharing their experiences allows them to process their trauma, commemorate those they lost, and connect with others who have faced similar pain. For the wider community, these stories foster a collective memory of the bombings, ensuring that the lessons learned are not forgotten. They serve as a reminder of the resilience of the human spirit and the capacity for individuals and communities to rebuild and find hope in the darkest of times. Education and the Future In educational settings, the stories of Hiroshima and Nagasaki are invaluable resources. They offer lessons on history, ethics, and the consequences of our actions. By incorporating these stories into curricula, educators can inspire students to think critically about war, peace, and the role of individuals in shaping a better world. The narratives of Hiroshima and Nagasaki empower young people to become advocates for peace, armed with the knowledge of the past and the determination to prevent future tragedies. Chapter 14 A Message of Peace In the years since the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, these cities have transformed from symbols of devastation to beacons of hope and peace. Central to this transformation has been the emphasis on peace education programs, which aim to teach the lessons of the past while fostering a commitment to a peaceful future. The Heart of Peace Education Peace education in Hiroshima and Nagasaki goes beyond the mere recounting of historical events. It delves into the human stories behind the bombings, focusing on the experiences of the survivors, the hibakusha, to convey the profound impact of nuclear warfare on individuals and communities. Through museums, peace parks and educational activities, visitors and students engage with the material in a way that encourages empathy, understanding and a deep desire for peace. Schools in both cities incorporate peace studies into their curricula, inviting survivors to share their stories with students. These first-hand accounts bring history to life, making the abstract horror of nuclear warfare concrete and personal. Students learn not only about the physical effects of the bombings, but also about the long-term consequences on health, the environment, and societal structures. Global reach. The message of peace from Hiroshima and Nagasaki has extended far beyond Japan's borders. International peace education programs draw on the experiences of these cities to advocate for disarmament and peacebuilding worldwide. Exchange programs allow students from various countries to visit Hiroshima and Nagasaki, where they can see the effects of the bombings for themselves and participate in peace-related activities. These experiences foster a sense of global citizenship and a shared responsibility to prevent future conflicts. Digital platforms and online resources have made the lessons of Hiroshima and Nagasaki accessible to a global audience. Virtual tours, survivor testimonies, and interactive educational materials provide opportunities for people around the world to learn from these cities' experiences, even if they cannot visit in person. Symbols of Hope Hiroshima and Nagasaki stand as powerful symbols of hope, demonstrating humanity's capacity for recovery and the possibility of reconciliation. The peace memorials in both cities are not only reminders of the past, but also monuments to the future. They symbolize the commitment of the survivors and their communities to peace. A testament to the idea that out of tragedy can come a profound and lasting commitment to ensuring such events never happen again. The annual peace memorial ceremonies in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, attended by people from around the globe, reinforce this message. They are moments of reflection, remembrance and renewal, 
where the commitment to peace is reaffirmed. These ceremonies, along with the release of paper lanterns and the ringing of the peace bell, are rituals that underscore the collective desire for a world without nuclear weapons. The Role of Individuals An important lesson of peace education is the power of individual actions. The stories of Hiroshima and Nagasaki teach that everyone has a role in promoting peace, whether through advocacy, education, or simply by choosing to live in a way that respects and values others. This message empowers people to make positive changes in their communities and beyond, contributing to a culture of peace. Looking forward As we look to the future, the message of peace from Hiroshima and Nagasaki remains as relevant as ever. In a world where conflict and division often dominate headlines, the need for peace education and the promotion of understanding and cooperation cannot be overstated. The experiences of these cities remind us of the devastating consequences of war and the importance of working together to build a peaceful future. Chapter 15. The Survivor's Legacy In the shadow of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the survivors, known as Hibakusha, carry a profound legacy. Their lives, forever altered by the events of August 1945, have become beacons of hope and change. Among them are individuals who, despite their suffering, chose to transform their pain into a force for peace and nuclear disarmament. Their stories are not just tales of survival, but of a deep commitment to creating a better world. The Teacher Who Taught Peace one such survivor from Hiroshima was a young teacher at the time of the bombing. The devastation she witnessed inspired her to dedicate her life to peace education. For decades, she visited schools around the world, sharing her story and the lessons she learned about the preciousness of peace. Her message was simple yet powerful. Peace begins with understanding and respect. Through her efforts, she inspired countless students to become advocates for peace, showing them the power of empathy and education in healing and change. The Artist Who Painted for Peace In Nagasaki, an artist who lost his family in the bombing channeled his grief into his art. His paintings, depicting the horrors of nuclear war, and the beauty of human compassion have been exhibited globally. Each piece serves as a reminder of the human cost of conflict and the enduring strength of hope. He became a vocal advocate for the abolition of nuclear weapons, using his art to communicate a universal message of peace. His work continues to inspire those who see it, bridging language and cultural barriers with the universal language of art. The Doctor Who Healed Beyond Borders Another survivor, a doctor, witnessed the immediate aftermath of the bombing in Hiroshima and dedicated his life to treating those affected by radiation. Recognizing the global threat posed by nuclear weapons, he became an outspoken advocate for disarmament and medical preparedness for nuclear accidents. He worked with international organizations to raise awareness about the medical consequences of nuclear war, advocating for a world where such weapons are never used again. His commitment to healing extended beyond his patients, aiming to heal the world of its nuclear threat. The Voice That Echoed Around the World Among the survivors was a woman whose voice became synonymous with the call for nuclear disarmament. Having lost her family and suffered severe injuries in Hiroshima, she found solace in sharing her story. Her speeches at the United Nations and other international forums were powerful calls to action, urging world leaders to work towards a world without nuclear weapons. Her story and her insistence on hope inspired movements for peace across the globe. She stood as a living testament to the cost of nuclear warfare and the urgent need for disarmament.
the legacy they leave. The Hibakusha, through their activism, have left an indelible mark on the world. Their stories, marked by unimaginable loss and incredible resilience, continue to inspire a new generation of peace activists. They remind us that out of the deepest despair can come the greatest hope. Their lives are a call to action, not just to remember the past, but to shape a future free from the threat of nuclear war. The legacy of these survivors teaches us that everyone has the power to make a difference. They show that activism can take many forms, from teaching and storytelling to art and direct advocacy. Their message is clear. Peace is possible. But it requires the commitment and action of individuals and communities around the world. Chapter 16 Visiting the Cities Today Today, Hiroshima and Nagasaki stand as vibrant cities, their streets and parks bustling with life. Far removed from the images of devastation that once defined them, these cities have been reborn as symbols of resilience and peace. Visitors to Hiroshima and Nagasaki are greeted not by remnants of destruction, but by thriving communities that have woven the lessons of their past into the very fabric of their present. Hiroshima, the city of peace. In Hiroshima, the Peace Memorial Park is a sprawling expanse of green in the heart of the city, serving as a central point of reflection and learning. The Genbaku Dome, with its exposed skeleton, stands as a stark reminder of the atomic bomb's power. Yet, surrounding it, the city pulses with energy. Modern buildings and bustling streets showcase Hiroshima's recovery and determination to move forward while never forgetting its past. The Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum, located within the park, offers a profound educational experience, detailing the events of August 6, 1945, and promoting a message of peace and disarmament. The museum, alongside the Children's Peace Monument and the countless other memorials within the park, draws visitors from around the world, united in their desire to understand and to remember. But Hiroshima is not defined solely by its memorials. The city is alive with culture, from its vibrant food scene to its beautiful natural surroundings. The rebuilt Hiroshima Castle and the Shukei-en Garden offer glimpses into Japan's rich history and the resilience of its people. Nagasaki A Beacon of Hope Nagasaki, too, tells a story of remarkable transformation. The Nagasaki Peace Park, with its iconic peace statue, invites contemplation and hope. The park, alongside the Nagasaki Atomic Bomb Museum, provides a powerful insight into the impact of the atomic bombing and the city's journey towards recovery. Yet, like Hiroshima, Nagasaki's spirit is seen in its revival and vitality. The city's beautiful landscapes, such as the Glover Garden and the Mount Inasa viewpoint, offer peaceful retreats that contrast with the bustling life of the city centre. Nagasaki's unique history as a melting pot of cultures is reflected in its architecture, festivals and cuisine, contributing to a rich cultural tapestry that enchants visitors. Living Memorials to Peace Both Hiroshima and Nagasaki serve as living memorials to peace. They are not static relics of the past, but dynamic cities that look to the future while honoring their history. The annual peace ceremonies in both cities, attended by people from around the globe, are testament to their ongoing commitment to peace and disarmament. These cities have also become centers for peace education, hosting conferences, workshops, and youth programs that engage the global community in discussions about peace, conflict resolution, and the abolition of nuclear weapons. Hiroshima and Nagasaki have taken on the responsibility of sharing their stories, 
not to incite bitterness, but to ensure that the atrocities of nuclear warfare are never repeated. A message to the world. Visiting Hiroshima and Nagasaki today offers a unique experience that merges the past with the present. These cities remind us of the horrors of war, the potential for humanity to recover from its greatest tragedies, and the importance of striving for a peaceful future. They stand as testaments to what can be lost in moments of conflict, but also to what can be gained through unity, resilience, and a shared commitment to peace. Chapter 17 Conclusion Towards a Peaceful Future As we close the chapters on the stories of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we are left with profound lessons and a message of hope. The journey through the past, exploring the depths of human suffering and the heights of resilience, brings us to a crucial crossroads. Here, we must choose the path towards a peaceful and compassionate future, learning from history to ensure that the tragedies of Hiroshima and Nagasaki are never repeated. Learning from the past. The first step towards building a peaceful future is to remember and learn from the past. The stories of Hiroshima and Nagasaki teach us about the consequences of war, especially the devastating impact of nuclear weapons. They remind us of the preciousness of human life and the importance of protecting it at all costs. Through education and remembrance, we honor the victims and survivors of the atomic bombings, ensuring that their experiences are not forgotten. Schools, museums, and peace parks in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, as well as educational programs around the world, play a crucial role in this mission, fostering a global culture of peace and understanding. Embracing Compassion and Understanding The path towards a peaceful future is paved with compassion and understanding. The stories of Hiroshima and Nagasaki show us the strength of the human spirit and the capacity for forgiveness and reconciliation. By embracing empathy, we can overcome differences, resolve conflicts peacefully, and build bridges between communities and nations. Compassion also means advocating for those who suffer and working to alleviate their pain. The Hibakusha, with their tireless efforts for peace and nuclear disarmament, exemplify this commitment. Their activism inspires us to take action, to raise our voices for peace, and to support initiatives that promote the well-being of all. Working together for peace. Creating a peaceful future is a collective endeavor that requires the participation of individuals, communities, and nations. It calls for a commitment to dialogue, cooperation, and mutual respect. By working together, we can address the root causes of conflict, build inclusive societies, and develop policies that prioritize peace and security for everyone. The global response to the atomic bombings, including the movements for nuclear disarmament and peace education, shows the power of collective action. These efforts must continue, with each generation contributing to the cause of peace in their unique way. A future built on hope. As we look to the future, let us be guided by hope. Hope not as a passive wish, but as a powerful force that motivates us to work for change. The rebirth of Hiroshima and Nagasaki from the ashes of destruction is a testament to the possibility of renewal and transformation. It shows that, even in the aftermath of great tragedy, there is potential for growth healing, and the creation of something beautiful. Our hope for a peaceful future is also rooted in the resilience and courage of those who have faced the horrors of war and chosen the path of peace. Their stories inspire us to believe in the possibility of a world where conflicts are resolved without violence, where diversity is celebrated, 
and where compassion guides our actions. A call to action. As we conclude our journey through the stories of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, let us carry forward the lessons learned. Let us commit to being advocates for peace in our daily lives, whether through educating others, supporting peace initiatives, or simply choosing kindness and understanding in our interactions. The path towards a peaceful future is one we must walk together, drawing on the strength of our shared humanity and the lessons of the past. It is a path filled with challenges, but also with immense potential for creating a more compassionate and peaceful world.